Well, welcome to Two Thieves. Today I want to talk about Netflix release, The Platform. Now, firstly, a warning, this film is gruesome. Secondly, spoiler alert, I'm totally gonna give away the ending, so go watch the film first and then come back. Now, this hard-hitting debut from director Gaudet Gastelu Arutia has got everyone talking. And no surprise, it's a great concept. So here it is, the main character Goreng wakes up in a concrete cell marked 48. It turns out we're in an enormous tower where food is delivered every day via a platform that travels from top to bottom. But here's the hook, those on the lower levels can only eat what those at the top have left for them. Better still, every month prisoners randomly switch levels. Some months you're at the top, others at the bottom. Now don't ask too many questions about the science of this environment, it's intentionally illustrative. At first glance, the film appears to be a simple, albeit dark and gory depiction of capitalism. And those with a more socialist leaning will love this devastating dystopian depiction of privilege and hierarchy. And undoubtedly the film has something to say here. Now, principal capitalists will quickly reject this oversimplified metaphor where nobody actually has to work to generate food. They might argue that capitalism would ultimately generate a bigger banquet for everyone. So whilst there is privilege at the top, ultimately more people get more food. And given there are no workers in the platform, just plain hierarchy, I mean, this could just as easily be a metaphor for corrupt socialism where those at the top take more than their fair share before passing it down to the people. As Orwell pointed out in Animal Farm, the pigs at the top inevitably start believing that some animals are more equal than others. But far from being a plea for social restructuring, it seems to me the film wants to expose a far more fundamental problem. That the heart of the problem isn't actually social structure. See, all the horror in the film is created by the chilling realisation, no matter what you say or do, no matter how much you long for a moment of spontaneous solidarity amongst the people, no matter your personal piety, no matter your pleading or your threatening, you just can't fix the persisting problem of human greed and selfishness. To quote an old preacher, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. But you can't fix other people's hearts, you can't even really fix your own. We simply won't reach utopia in structures. And this is where the film got especially interesting for me as a Christian. I mean, this idea that society's problems are fundamentally not out there, but in here, is a deeply Christian idea. There's an interesting moment in the film where Goreng tells Trimagasi he, told, he holds him responsible for his actions and not the administration. There's an interesting question. Are we morally responsible for our actions or are we all just victims of our circumstance? Now clearly the film had a lot of Christian references throughout. I and mean, we see the Bible, people asking about belief in God, inmates calling Goreng the Messiah, that weird communion scene with eating flesh. I mean, we even eventually discover the whole has 333 floors with two on each floor, which makes 666 inmates. That's the Christian number for evil. So what are we to make of all of these references? Well, truthfully, I have no idea how much was intended by the director, but what you might have missed is the platform paints a faint, abstract picture of the Christian message of hope, the gospel. So here it is. As the film begins, we wake up in a corrupt world in need of saving, in need of a new heart. Right? Inmates can't fix the system, we can't fix ourselves. No amount of piety gets us to the next level. Just as Jesus says, you can't get to heaven with your good deeds. And whilst everyone is in the hole for their own personal misdemeanors, Goreng, the innocent saviour figure, steps in willingly. Not with weapons, but with a book. That's interesting, right? Jesus says we don't change the world with violence, but with God's word. 
A word that repeatedly promises God will give believers not a new structure, but a new heart. Now, even though Gareng is born into trouble and must face trials, temptations and sufferings just like Jesus, ultimately the only way to fix this mess and beat this evil is for him, the Messiah figure, to willingly abandon his position at the top, to travel from the highest heaven to the lowest hell, not for himself, but for the sake of others. An act of sacrifice, reaching down to the very lowest soul in society that they might get sent up to the top. That's what we see as Goreng, exhausted, bleeding, lifts the little girl onto the platform. What was Goreng's deadly, sacrificial mission all for? Her. And it cost him his life, but it was a trade. He sacrifices his life for hers and ultimately everybody else. And the repeated refrain in the film is the only way to truly change the world is a message, a symbol, <laughs> not the panna cotta. Christians everywhere put their hope in a symbol, the symbol of the cross, that message of a saviour who left heaven to hell to rescue the world. So that's the platform. Ultimately, the director said this film is about starting discussion. So look, tell me what you think in the comments below. What did you think of the ending? What did I miss? What do you think about these Christian symbols? And hey, hit subscribe for more videos like this. Have a great day.